This is Deb Alfrich, hashtag redhead is She-Hulk. Oh my goodness. We just had some insights. Thinking about talking, pitching tomorrow. I am the large redheaded girl who stunk beyond. Darwin Freud Einstein. Descartes Newton. And when I said that, I going in my pat phrase, debunking gravity, um, I'm not lying, gravity immediately toppled something in my passenger seat right over on top of me. There's a pillow. Yeah, that's my pantry, my, my spare bedroom, my everything. Been living in my car over a year because I am an apex intellect. And I don't know who to go to to fund an apex intellect because everyone I went to is operating down in that wee little tiny little just just newest little executive functioning thing. I, as the fifth force, however, operate in the full entity of this, it's all connected, access to the entirety of my memory banks. The only riches will ever possess. And I've hashtagged everything well. And maybe slightly disjointed for you. But if you got me to slow down, if I know who I'm talking to and I'm making certain points. Well. I can debunk gravity. Gravity is a very weak force. I stand by that assertion. And then I, I was going to say, gravity is not conscious. But gravity can operate via consciousness, my consciousness, because it's all electromagnetism. I'm sorry, physicists. I mean, I'm sorry. I did decide I wanted to be an atomic physicist when I was like seven or eight. I got the Encyclopedia Britannica's and got through the A's, got to atomic physics. Quirks! Oh, it all sounds so fascinating. I took physics in high school and I was like, no, no. We're, excuse me, I signed up for the science that talks about quirks. And you'll get to that in like 14 years, probably seven. But um, no! She quite literally, and she equals MC squared. I'm working on, you know, Einstein, this is, this is, you know, we get along better than a couple of the other folks. Einstein worked on ending racism in his older years, and that's what I need to know. Einstein and I, Einstein is always clapping for me. He's always like, oh, if you'd, we'd have been together and had a, had conversations, he wouldn't have made, well, he, 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 we would have collaborated to, to, to express that energy equals matter. Let's be light squared. In humans, a part of the universe for which that's always true, then humans are energy. That's equivalent to their matter times the speed of light squared. Now, I've already solved for the speed of light squared. It's the key point you need to understand about life-centric thinking and the real vast IP that's part of well-being philosophy. Understanding that the speed of light, it's, it's 
but it's infinitesimal. It's as fast as we can think of things going, right? Um, in humanness's terms. Why would Einstein need to square infinity fast? There's fasternesses than the speed of light. And one of those fasternesses is consciousness. A specific brand of consciousness that we like to particle down into calling thoughts. Consciousness doesn't obey any laws of time as human civilization knows it to be in 2022. We have a socialized conception of timekeeping that we've all bought into. But physicists, philosophy is the new physics, I'm sorry. <laughs> get, get me a TV show, get me just Gen, Gen, Gen Z Cohan, Gen Z Cohan, because Zen Z, Wanda Losey, wants to create a TV show. Philosophy is the new physics. So philosophers are the right brain of science. And we've become extraordinarily rigidly in the left brain of science, which is the math and the measurement and the reproducibility and the like, everyone agrees. But everyone can agree on things that are wrong. agreed for quite some time that the earth was the center of the universe. And I got Galileo'd just for my capacity to stay alive in an extraordinarily outlier body. But then, as soon as I figured out how to un-Galileo myself, house arrest, get out, because my house arrest was the toxicity of the built world of this universe. And I'm going to tie this together and that together and this together. And when I don't have all these internal heads that say, got to be really brief in these videos, I just go, I tie all these things together. This is an entire improv of a world evolving hypotheses that tie the entire universe together in a much more life-centric way, using logic plus love intertwined. The wise feminine. You, everything we know is coming from a masculine perspective, and as we know, that's less than half of humanity. It is time for us to see the world intellectually, paradigmatically, via a feminine approach to all this data. You see, what I do is tell stories about the same data. Right? This, is, this, is, this is very pro-science. If you find anyone disagreeing with me, they're on the side of ignorance. But anyone who's an actual science, science is a process and it's, it's, but part of the process is the creativity of telling a story about the data. Right now, the premises of all of the stories we're telling are incorrect. Humans are not simply biochemical beings. We are bioelectrical beings. And we have simply, it's, 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 it's a visual perception thing. We, we live in a culture of seeing is believing, the, the, the math and the measuring. I see all those numbers. I mean, I couldn't do that math, but you've shown me all those numbers, so it must be true. You think about this one more time, math. Okay, none of us can do the math that they're doing to prove any of these things about the universe and physics and the solar system. We can't do that math ourselves. A ninety-three percent of us can't do that math ourselves. We're not mathematicians that do the kind of math that explains the complexity of the solar system. Like that's, that's, that's it's impressive stuff. However, 
what if it's just a signal story? What if math is a story about the universe that doesn't contain all the kinds of data that we needed to contain, like emotions and love and feelings? And so that story that is just about the physicality, physics of the universe, pens humans into lives. like widgets we are being treated like widgets and um, no I just don't, I don't know what word goes there being flummoxed this isn't improv y'all sometimes when you're exploratorily thinking about the edge of pleading I'm, I'm, I'm advancing physics over here biophysics really So gravity is electromagnetism, everything is. I mean, I just did it. <laughs> oh, I just did it. Perfectly stable object. Just when I said gravity was a weak force. Gravity. Consciousness is tool to play with. It's one way of explaining the universe, and it's a very valid one. But we can also just see gravity as electromagnetic circuitry one of the downstream effects of the fundamentalness of an electromagnetic universe. It works for me. It should work for you too. Now the way you're going to need to know to get there, because it's not just a purely thought experiment, it's a felt embodied knowing. This is where I'm always losing people because the full embodiment of it all is so crucial. You can't look at 1D, that word means this, word means that, this, it, 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 it's, you can't mean that word creates this picture. You can't just mean like that picture reminds me of a location. It can't just be these, it has to be the entirety of the meaning Right here, I know I went super gamma. Creative artistic flow, and especially when I'm just talking to me, I mean, I don't really think anyone's ever going to listen to this but me. I like somebody to, but I know I am in bliss making this, will be in bliss listening to it, and can't imagine at some point hundreds of thousands of people going that's a human demonstrating being entranced intellectually solving conundrums of how the world operates at a crucially high level and it's just making being so much fun and she's taking short notes 
shorthand and quick notes and hashtagging through this little play. This is a play act. But it's also truly how thinking beyond the current reality gets done. Thinking, thinking deeper into the current reality to explain things that are heretofore unexplainable. Reminding us of the fact that we live in a framework, a paradigm. But we haven't quite made it all be logically tied together. This has been Deb Helfrich, hashtag redheaded she hulk. I use logic plus love intertwined stand-up philosophy. It's a new kind of one-woman improv that seeks to entrain people into trance using really important data about how the world fits together in new innovative storytelling ways to tie everything together and get us to see what is illogical and what will be a lot more logical. Everything is frequency. The world is all electromagnetic waves. You put Darwinism in there, you put brainwaves in, in there, and you start going, oh. Oh. and I'm the pinnacle of evolution over here. Homo sapiens sapiens. That's my job. Help my species get their second sapiens back. Got to bring the knowing back into our experience of our lives. All right, this has been Zenzi. Harmony.